Good afternoon everybody. I hope you're all doing well during this difficult time. There's a few kind of topics in board gaming that really have kind of caught my attention and I just wanted to record a couple of videos uh, just exploring these topics and just to give you my thoughts and some of the developments in the tabletop world. So this video is actually going to be about aesthetics and functionality or function over form and what we're going to do is we're going to look at some games that have been reprinted and we're going to be looking at the big changes to the art, the style and we're going to talk about whether the change has been good, bad or maybe a wee bit of both. So the format of the video is going to be quite straightforward. I've effectively got five sets of games that I'm going to go through. So I'm going to have five where I think that the change in art direction has been great. Um, I'm going to have five where it's kind of indifferent, you know, a wee bit here, a wee bit there. And then I'm going to have five where I think it's actually been a step back. And just so that we're getting a wee bit of variety, I'm going to do, do them in these sets. So I'll talk about one that I like, one that I'm kind of indifferent towards, and one that I'm not really a fan of. And we'll just go through it, and um, as we go through I'll give you some of my reasoning as well. And you'll probably notice a kind of common theme uh, throughout this as we look, look at the games. Now, just a wee disclaimer before we get into this, I don't own all of these games. Um, some of them I've got the older edition, some of them I've got the newer edition, and some I don't own at all. But I have played them and I do know a wee bit about the changes in art. So, for any games that I do have, what I've done is I've tried to take some photos, albeit not great quality, but just, you know, because I've got the games here to show you the components and then I'm going to be using images that I found online for the version that I don't have so that we can do a comparison and at this point I'll just say I've tried to respect copyright and I've tried not to steal people's images and you know um, and, and I've been quite conscious of that but it is quite difficult there might be the odd graphic that I've used where you know I, I, I might not have the permission of the author most of them have been taken off Board Game Geek, so if you're one of the authors um, and it's your image and you're not happy with it being used in the video, just let me know and I'll alter the video or take it down. So I just wanted to put that out there before we move on. So we're just going to get started and uh, going to be looking at our first set. Um, and this, these are ones where the there's maybe not, I don't feel as strongly, so we're going to go from games where I don't feel quite as strongly about to ones that I feel a lot more strongly about. Okay, so let's get started. So the first uh, game we're going to talk about, we'll start off with the good, and um, we're going to talk about a, a set of games really, um, because this is a, a set of games where the improvements have been very slight, and we're looking at Dominion and Agricola, and the reason I've picked these two games is because there's only been a very minor change to the art style for the reprints, where in Agricola's case they've touched up the shading, they've made it a, a, a look a wee bit more vibrant, and they've just changed some of the shapes of the components. And for Dominion, it's mainly just been a case of them increasing the font size and adding art to some of the cards that had just symbols, really. So things like your coppers and your golds and your curses to give the game a wee bit more flavour. Um, but there's not a huge difference between the first and the second editions. But overall, I think it has been an improvement. So this is the kind of thing I like to see, where it's just a slight improvement, slight changes, but it is an improvement overall. The first one that I'm kind of indifferent about um, is going to be Nurushima Hex. Now this one here is quite interesting because it's actually got an app implementation and the older version of the app has now been replaced with the art for the, the new tabletop version. And I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures of the boards so that you can kind of see the differences. Now I don't actually have it with me, it's actually with a, a relative, but I've got the original um, Nurushima Hex, the version 2. And uh, I'm quite used to the art there, it's got this kind of gritty look, some of the graphic design could be better, it's maybe not as clear, whereas the newer uh, iteration has got a kind of cleaner, more refined look, but at the same time it's a wee bit less gritty, a wee bit less Mad Max. So I, I like both, but there's not a huge difference there, so it's really generally what kind of aesthetic you like, if you like a kind of older kind of comic book style or if you like a new kind of more polished, almost kind of mobile game style, then it really, that'll depend on the, the one that you probably are going to gravitate towards. And finally, we're going to talk about the first game that I'm, where I'm not really a fan of the reprint, and that is a game called Royals. I actually got it here. So 
This is my version of Royals. And this here is the first edition. So this is the, the original one before the reprint. Now you can see the box isn't very interesting. Uh, it doesn't really pop. It's not, it's not a great box to be fair. Um, but if we have a wee look at the game board, you can see that it's not, not very interesting. Um, you know, it's really quite basic, but it's very easy to read. If we now look at the new reprint, you can see the art is a lot more vibrant. Um, the It looks a lot more modern and refined. But at the same time, the board is really busy. There's actually a space for each territory in the game that's redundant because in the original game, you just kind of move the, the, the blocks to the side, which is a much more elegant solution than having these two boxes. It's really just quite confusing. So overall, my personal opinion, I prefer the, the older um, edition just because the board's more readable and there's not such a big difference in art um, that I think the, the new version looks a, a ton better. So to me, the kind of choice is obvious. But again, your mileage may vary. So this is our second set of games and we're going to be starting again with the good. And we're going to be looking at the revised edition of Pandemic which probably will be the one that most people are familiar with. Now this is actually on the brink. I do have the original box, but the style of the game is very similar and I've actually got the original components in here. So when we look at the board, we can see it's almost got this kind of plague and um, ink look. It's, you know, it's quite refined um, and it's, it's just, you know, good graphic design, easy to read and quite colorful, but it's not like information overload. So I think this is a really, really good redesign and I'm really, really happy with the look of the pandemic. Whereas if you look at the original one, um, it's more, you know, kind of older wooden components. And it still looks okay, but I think this is definitely um, a big improvement in terms of the art. So for the second game, where I'm sort of on the fence, we're going to be looking at Robo Rally. Now this is an interesting one because it's been reprinted by WizKids, I believe. And some of the changes have been good. So the new boards are a wee bit thicker, I've heard, and the component quality in some uh, regards has improved. And maybe the graphic designs are a wee bit easier to follow. But the old one has a kind of more classic look, like a more mechanical look. Almost like something at Robot Wars or, you know, like Wally, where it's got the kind of metal panels and the movement cards, the programming cards, they look more like mechanical and robotic. It's, you know, it's it's a, it's a small thing, but again, there is a, a fair difference between the two. So again, much like Nurushima Hex, I think this one's really a case of what kind of aesthetic do you like more? Because both are functional, maybe a slight edge towards the newer version in terms of readability, but... At the same time, the, the old version does have a quite quite a unique look as well. So for me, I'd be quite happy with either version, but you know, it is one where they have made a few big changes to the, the art style. Now, my second game where I'm not a huge fan of the graphic overhaul is actually a two-player card game called Jaipur. So you can see here, this is actually the original printing, and it comes in this kind of uh, this long box, so it's quite compact. And if you look at the components, it's just got, got this kind of vibrant, cartoony look to it. It's quite, it's almost mobile gamey, but I just like it. You know, it's it's quite whimsical. It's quite, it's a family game. It just seems to suit it pretty well. Whereas if you look at the reprint, uh, you can see it's a wee bit more kind of generic. It's still really good art, but it just doesn't have the same character. It's just a bit flatter and just not as not as interesting to me. So again, a lot of people probably could argue against this, but I prefer the original uh, art just because of the, the kind of type of game it is, the fact it's a family game and it's, you know, it's quite a light game. But the new art is good. I'm just not a big fan of it. But there is one, one big faux pas with the new edition. And it's all to do with this one camel card that's in the original game. So I didn't notice this until someone pointed this out uh, in the forums. But there is actually one camel card in the original game. You can see that there. That has a little panda on it. And it's actually a wee Easter egg that was put there by the designer. Um, so there is, it's only on the one camel card. And some people have actually uh, introduced a house rule to the game involving that particular card. And I thought that was a really nice touch. And that isn't in the reprint. 
And it's not a big deal, but it's it's just nice to see these wee things that have been kind of snuck into games. You know, a bit like the wee people in, in, inside the box and in Imperial Settlers. These wee Easter eggs. And they're nice wee things to find. So that's another kind of mark against the reprint. But it's still good art, and it wouldn't stop me playing it. But I'm quite happy with my first edition copy. Okay, moving on to our next good, bad and ugly. For our good, we're going to be looking at Camel Up. Now, again, you're going to notice a kind of recurring theme here. This is the original version. You can see it's got a very kind of cartoony look to it. It's quite childish in a way, but I think this actually works really well with this game because it's a silly game where you're betting on camels uh, going around the track and silly things can happen, like the camels can go and jump on each other's backs and it can change the winner of the race. And it's a game you can't take seriously. And I think this art works really well for it because you look at that and you think, this looks like a family game, it looks like a bit of fun, short wee betting game that anyone could pick up and play. You now look at the reprint, and you look at the box art, and it's got, I wouldn't say a serious look to it, but it's almost like it's got this kind of grand look to it, this majestic look, like you're going on an adventure, running through the desert, like something out of Johnny Quest, you know, or, you know, where in the world is Carmen San Diego, that kind of thing. And to me, that doesn't really work for this game. It's a game where you're betting in camels. You're in the Middle East and you've got your wee camels running around the track and everybody's putting bets on them. And the expansion on old style camera for like a photo finish. And it just, it's not bad again. And the new board's got the nice pop-up look and it's really, it's, you know, it's a really, really nice art design. But it's just a bit flatter and it just, I don't feel it's as, as good a fit for the game. Again, I'm going to be keeping my first edition copy because I just prefer the look to it. So moving on to our middle one, we're going to be looking at a game called Citadels, and I've got my copy here. This is the kind of compact copy. The newer one comes in a much bigger box because it has quite a bit more content, and this does have the Wii Mini expansion on it right enough. And Citadels is an interesting one because the art by today's standards is quite dated in the original one, but it's got this kind of sketch art where the, the characters are caricatures, and um, th there's a wee bit of inconsistency in the art. It's almost like, you know, like a, a collectible card game where some of the cards look like they've been drawn by different people. But I quite like that because it makes them look unique. And I just, I quite like the aesthetic of it. There's just something about it that I quite like. Whereas if you look at the newer version of Citadels, again, it's got much more refined art. It's a lot more consistent. It still looks really nice. But... It just, it's a bit flat and it just doesn't have as much character. But I still like it. So overall, I think they're both good in their own way. Again, I probably would prefer the original one slightly, but I do like the new one as well. And I would quite happily own either. I just happen to have the older version. So our good this time is going to be London by Martin Wallace, which has gotten a reprint a few years back and it's they've completely changed the art. It's actually one you can get quite cheap right now, and it's a, it's a really good game. But what I really like about it is the, the fact that the art is more refined and, and still has a fair bit of character, but it just looks a lot cleaner and just, yeah, it's, it's just, it's good art. And if you look at the, the original game, it's got this kind of dated look to it, which I sometimes appreciate. But in this case, I, I think the new edition is just a clear winner. You know, the board's nicer, it's got, you know, a nice colour, a uh, nice, nice kind of typeface, and the cards, the iconography is really good, the graphic design is really easy to follow. Um, so, there's really no reason why you wouldn't want to grab the second edition over the first edition here. Uh, I just think, in, in every way, it is the better version of the game. Okay, moving on, we'll look at our next good. And this one is the second edition of Game of Thrones board game. Now, this here, the art, really detailed. It's got a really, quite a muted colour scheme, but I think that works quite well. Uh, you know, the whole kind of Westeros, the, you know, the intrigue, the darkness. So it's, it's a good look, nice bold title there, like you would see in the show of the books. And that extends to the game board, it extends to the house cards, it's got this consistent look that, that really works well with the source material. If you look at the older version, the art's still good, there's nothing really to complain about, but it just seems that the reprint has improved in every aspect really. 
I mean, you could maybe argue that the old game is slightly easier to read just because there's maybe a wee bit less detail in the map. But for me, I don't really have any difficulties when I'm playing the game. The figures stand out quite well. The order tokens, when they're flat, they're, you, they're quite easy to read. So to me, the second edition is a clear winner just because the arts really just had a kind of overhaul and it all just works really well with the source material. So for... Another one that I'm kind of on the fence about, we're going to be looking at another Martin Wallace game, and this is Automobile, which is actually a really good heavy economic game. Um, and in this one, it kind of just really depends on your opinion, really, of the new art, I think. I really like the new art, but at the same time, it is quite busy, and I feel that the board is a wee bit more difficult to read, the palette's quite muted, the board almost a bit busy and it can be tricky to kind of get the game state just at a glance. Whereas if you look at the old board, it is really not much to look at. I mean, it's almost like a colour-coded spreadsheet. It really is pretty ugly. But at the same time, it is a lot easier to read, I think. And for this kind of game, this new production is probably not necessary for you to enjoy the game because a lot of the time you're just going to be focusing on your actions and crunching numbers. So having nice art, really, I don't think it's a huge boon to this game. This is one where I think the old edition is probably just as good as the new one. You know, the new one has its merits, but the old one's a bit easier to read. So I would quite happily own and, and play either. It swings and roundabouts, even though they are quite different. Now this next one that I'm not a big fan of is actually a recent one. In fact, it's actually on Kickstarter right now. And this is the upcoming reprint for Kemet which is the, the Blood and Sand uh, version of the game. And I'm really not happy with what they've done here to the art. The original one, which I don't have to hand, unfortunately, because, again, it's with, with family, has a really fantastical look. Um, everything pops. The board's really easy to read. You, you can clearly see where all the, the sections are. The kind of monuments are larger than life. They, they really stick out. The player boards have this kind of fantastical look to them. The power tiles, the, you know, I just really, really, really dig the original art of Comet. And you now look at the new version, and it's like they've just dialed it all back. It's, you know, everything's kind of muted. It's got this kind of less defined pastel look. The colours are, are muted. The board's a lot harder to read. It's really difficult to see the white line that separates the territories. And, you know, the shadows for all the monuments are all over the place. And I just, I'm, I'm just really not a fan. And... They are actually offering an upgrade pack with the original art, so it's okay for people who have the original version, and I really appreciate that that is an option, but it's totally put me off kickstarting the new version, because I just think the old version has a much better look to it. Now that's not to say it's not a great game, I still think Kemet's amazing, and if you don't have it then you should still get it, but if you've already got the original uh, game, you're better off getting the upgrade pack in my opinion, because... They've really done a disservice to the feel of the game with this change of art. I'm not a fan of it. And I don't think I'm alone in this one. Okay, so looking at our final trio of games. The first one we're going to be looking at uh, is Dune, which I think is a really, really great reprint. I've got it here. So this is the really recent reprint by Gale Force 9. And what I really like about the Dune reprint is the fact that it's not over the top. They've not went crazy with components. They've kept it with this, this kind of classic look in the sense that the, the components are very similar to the original game, but they've just given the art a facelift. And it, it's not the best art in the world, but I think it works really well with the Dune theme. And it's functional, really easy to read, good graphic design, nice player aids, good screens. It's just generally a good production and it's not over the top. And as a result, the game is actually quite affordable as well. So, if you're going to get an old game, and you're going to reprint it and change the art, this is the way to go. And I do believe that the art, a lot of it has been created by a community, and Gale Force Nine has kind of adopted that for the reprint, but that doesn't mean to say they've not recognised a good thing. So I think this is a really, really tasteful reprint of Dune, and fans of the original should be really, really pleased with it. Now, for a last one that I'm sort of not as sure about, um, we're going to be looking at Power Grid, and I've actually got this version here, Power Grid Deluxe, which is, I think, the less common version because it's not as well supported. 
there isn't as many map expansions and things, but they really did change the art for this quite dramatically. It's got quite a vibrant look, lots of really bright colours, um, you know, the bigger board's really nice, the territory's a bit easier to see, it just looks, it's got this, I would say fantastical look, but yeah, it's almost like some of the power plants look like they're out of Dr. Seuss, really, it's got this kind of whimsical look to it, and I quite like it. When you look at the original power grid, it's got a very iconic look, it's got this very industrial and kind of almost amateurish kind of art, but it really works for it. It makes it feel like an industrial game, you know, like where it's all about the function of the game over the form. The art there is really just to carry the mechanics. And I just think it really works. Now, I think the board's maybe a wee bit more difficult to read in the original one. It's got this quite a cluttered, almost 90s look to it. I don't know if that makes sense. But it's, it's fine, it's not bad. I think the new one has a better board, but at the same time, I, I do like the kind of classic look to the power plants in the original game as well. And there is a lot more support for the original too. So between the two, I think if you're really getting into the game, you're better off going for the original because it's much more widely supported with expansions. So that's probably would be the one that I would go towards, but that's purely just because of what's available for, for that version of the game and not because of the, the aesthetics. But both, I think, are good choices. So, I really feel that I've saved the absolute worst for last. Or at least in my humble opinion. And for that, we're going to be looking at Sheriff of Nottingham. Now, this is a great little bluffing negotiation game. It's an absolute hoot. And it really deserves to be in everybody's collection. But unfortunately, if you're thinking of getting this... I would seriously try and get the original one if you can because ah, it's just the new art style is just such a downgrade for me. I mean, here, if you look at the original game, look at the cards, there's loads of detail there, they're really vibrant, they're really lush. Uh, the characters, they, they all look like they've got personalities, they're all very quite different. You know, the baker's like quite a big stocky guy and you've got the, the kind of slim, kind of sleazy cheese vendor that you know it's, it's almost like robin hood men in tights it's it's like a caricature it's over the top and it's brilliant it just works with the theme so well you look at the reprint first of all these characters look at them and they look like they've just been pulled from a mobile game or, or some sort of jrpg baker just is this wee young thin guy and i'm all for diversity in games and you know like not for stereotyping things and, and all that but for a game like Sheriff of Nottingham that's totally tongue-in-cheek, this just doesn't work anywhere near as well. But that's not the worst thing. The real criminal thing here is the goods cards. Look at this. I mean, what were they thinking? It's just like a plain background with an icon on it and then the sheriff's eyes at the top. It's not even full card art and it just, it just looks cheap. It just... There are no words to describe how much this is a step back from the original art. The only thing I will say for it, and this is this is a fair point, is the colours that they've used. So they've went from the red and the green for the contraband and the legal goods respectively to a blue and a red. And I think that's a good choice because as someone who's not colour blind, I'm aware that red and green is one of the major clashes for people that do suffer from that. So I think that's been a good move. It makes the game more accessible and I'm all for that. But at the same time, the original game, the cards do look quite different. You can tell by what's on the card what it is. Um, and the penalties as well are different for the contraband and the legal goods. So there's a couple of ways there, even with the colour blindness, that make the game still playable, I would think. So to me, this is just... It's just a huge step back, and I really recommend you grabbing the first uh, version if you can, especially if you can get the expansion for it as well, The Merry Men, which is really good. If you can get a hold of that as well, that's something that makes the game even better. So yeah, definitely not a fan of the new version. Don't know what they're thinking. Should have just stuck to the original art. It was great. So just before we close off the video, my final thoughts, I thought it would be worthwhile pointing out a couple of games where there's been a change to box art. Um, so where the components are the same, but they've just decided to change the, the look of the box. And the first one we're going to look at is 
one that I'm very glad I own. This is a fantastic game. And that's Chaos in the Old World. Now you'll have, need to forgive me, the box is a wee bit beat up because it has seen a fair bit of play. But this is actually the revised version with the uh, lovely Nurgle there uh, in the background. And yeah, this this is a really nice cover. I really like it. Um, it's really detailed, really interesting. Um, and I, I really dig, dig the cover. However, if you look at the original cover for the game, it's just the logo with a dark background. And in a lot of ways, I think this is a great box. It's really mysterious. You've got chaos in the old world and you don't know you don't know anything else about it. So, so if you look at, if you see that, if you see that that logo, that you see those words, and you think chaos in the old world, what's that all about? It kind of stirs up a bit of curiosity there. So, I actually really, really like the original box design for this, um, even though it's really quite plain. I think it's, I think it's really striking, and I think it's great. But having said that, the, the reprint box art's great as well. So they're both really good, but I just thought I would kind of point out that big difference, you know, just to the box art between the two editions. Another one we're going to look at is Inish, and I've got the original one here. So you can see this is it's quite a divisive cover, actually. A lot of people really don't like this. Um, now, the art in the game on the cards is very similar to what's in the box. So uh, if you're not a fan of the box, you're probably not going to be a fan of the art in general. But I really dig this box. It's um, it's really unique. There's nothing quite like it. It speaks for itself. It, it is its own thing. And I really like that. Um, if you look at the reprinted one, I still like this one as well. It's a wee bit more fantastical. You know, it's I, I quite like the colours and just the... It's Yeah, it's, it's a good box art. But I quite like the original as well. So again, this is one where they've changed it quite radically. But both are, both are pretty good. Okay, so now that we've looked at some examples, you might be thinking, what was the point of this video? And to me, it's really just to kind of explain this, this trend that I've noticed that when games are reprinted, the art is changed in a way that's not always, that, that doesn't really fit the game as well as the original art. And a lot of the times it's because they're making the art a bit more uniform with other games, a bit more generic, and... I think really the main culprit here is actually a game called Scythe, which is a game I love. It's, it's a fantastic game, it's got a great art style, and it's got this kind of painted look. And I'm finding that a, a lot of newer games, are they're kind of going for these aesthetics. It's either this or the kind of mobile phone game aesthetic, the kind, the kind of casual thing that people are used to seeing when they're watching animated series or, you know, they're playing mobile games. It's almost like they feel that that's what people are used to seeing, so that's what's going to work for every game. And I don't believe that's always the case. So, before we finish the video, I, I'm, I would like to ask you, what are your thoughts on this? Are there any games where you really love the reprint, where you think they've done a great job with that? Are there games where you just wish they'd left it alone? What are your thoughts? It'd be great to hear, and it'd be and also nice to have some reinforcement that I'm not alone in this, that these changes can be really significant, and they can really affect our experiences of the games. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, my insights into that, and as I said, it'd be great to know what your thoughts are on the subject, so if you could leave a wee comment below, it'd be lovely to have a wee bit of dialogue, and just, yeah, let's, let's just see what people think. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.